Hello, my name is Mike Thorson. I'm product manager here at Batson Enterprises and at this phase of the rod building process we're going to mark uh, the rod blank for guide placement and also for uh, decorative tip wrap and a ferro wrap. The first thing you want to do at this phase is make sure that you wash your hands pretty thoroughly because you want to make sure you got most of the oil and grease and dirt off your fingers. It can cause problems at the finishing stage which comes later. It's really a pretty good idea also just to grab a roll of paper towels and some rubbing alcohol. Put a little bit of alcohol on a paper towel and then start at the tip of the rod and just carefully wipe the rod very clean of all the dirt and grease and dust that you've has accumulated onto this, this uh, point of the build. You're going to want to have a tape measure, a razor blade, what we call a grease pencil or china marker. These you can get at any art supply store. And most rod builders will work with quarter inch masking tape and one inch masking tape. That's basically all you need um, at this point. Plus some sort of a template that lists the guide spacing and then having your guides and components, uh, only other component is the hook keeper laid out so you, uh, for use. At this point what I like to do is count the number of guides that I have laid out on the bench and also count the number of marks that I have on my template. In this case there's seven guides and seven marks, hallelujah. We want to make sure we have the same number. At this point what I like to do is go ahead and just tear off a piece of the wider masking tape, roll the rod so the real seat hood is up, and I like to put a piece of tape, oh, maybe six or eight inches above the foregrip of the rod and just lightly tape it to the bench. And the purpose of that is just to keep the rod from rolling around. The first mark we're going to put is merely just a half an inch mark for the tip wrap. So you just mark a little white mark at a half an inch. Our next mark happens to be at four and a half inches. So I look at my tape measure, come to four and a half, put a light little mark. Sometimes you have to kind of grab the blank again, try not to handle it a whole lot so you're not putting any dirt or grease back on it. Our next mark's at nine and a half, which is right here. Then we go to 15, right here, 21, uh, 28 inches, 35 and a half. Now we've reached a ferrule which is the joint in the rod and we're going to go ahead and put a half an inch mark right there at the ferrule and then we'll put our final guide mark on which is at 44 inches. At this point I like to take the quarter inch wide tape, tear off a piece, lay it on the bench and then what I like to do is just cut it lengthwise in half. And then as far as the length you need to make the little pieces that you're cutting, probably about an inch and a half to two inches long. And then just strip them off the table or piece of cardboard and place them on the edge of the table or whatever your work surface is. So basically now we're ready to actually put the guides on the rod blank. It's important that you put the tape right at the junction where the guide frame meets the foot as you can see right here. On a spinning rod this curve goes forward so basically now we've got the tape on the foot we're going to actually put our first guide on the rod blank. You're going to probably want to loosen this piece of tape that's been holding the rod in place because it, you won't be able to move it then. And what we're going to do is just grab the rod carefully and keep this guide in line with the reel seat hood, place it on the blank and then center the guide ring right over the white mark that you put on the blank. Then just kind of grip that tape and squeeze it around the blank. And that's basically it. You put your first guide on the, the rod and it's ready to be wrapped. Just as a reminder, it's very important to line up the ring of the guide with the mark. We're not putting the foot on the mark, we're putting the center of the ring over the guide mark on the rod blank. On the next guide you basically do the same process again. Place the tape on the foot near the joint of the brace in the foot. Go ahead and find your next mark. Try to keep this guide in line with the one you put on previously. Squeeze the tape around the blank and you've got that guide. Keep in mind you'll be able to do a little subtle alignment after you've got all these on the rod blank. So we go ahead and go to the next size guide.
place the tape at the same juncture. And go ahead and put the guide on the blank, center the ring over the mark, and squeeze the tape. Now we're reaching an, a, a point where, believe it or not, we even have to use a narrower strip of tape. So basically what you'd want to do is go back, get your razor blade again, and cut even a little bit thinner strip of tape. Peel it off. And you might want to do this in advance. On this size guide, I'm leaving a pretty good bit of that foot exposed. So when you go to wrap the thread up, you'll be able to do it without any problem at all. Once you have all the guides taped on, you're very close to being finished with the, the build of your first fishing rod. Um, it's important that you be kind of patient over the next couple phases because it's the thread wrapping and the finishing process. Take your time. Be patient with it and make sure you let it dry long enough and you're going to end up with a wonderfully built fishing rod that you've made yourself.